This is called the post and stay method. Here are the corset stays. You can get these at corset supply companies. These are about five inches long and this is what we use pretty much for the duration of the ears. There's one, one stay per ear. You shouldn't have to replace these stays. They should be good throughout the whole length of time that you are posting puppy ears. Puppy ears you'll probably post uh, between three and four months of age. You might have to go to five or six months of age. Just different puppies have different ear leathers. Different ear croppers have different crops. If you have to extend the length of the stay, you can put two stays together. Just put them together like that. Take a piece of tape and fasten them together so that it makes one stay. The most important thing is prepare all the ingredients in your ear crop, your post and stay method, before you get the puppy. Because the most traumatic thing for the puppy is taking the ears down. We're going to sandwich each of these posts between tape, but we don't want sticky side to sticky side. We want sticky side to non-sticky side. Put this in the middle, then sticky side up so that you're going from the sticky side to the back of the tape that's non-sticky. And then when you're done, your product will be sticky side on one and non-sticky on the other. So I have non-sticky and sticky. We have a nice little sandwich. So I'm going to put that to the side. Two pieces of Bounty. Bounty works the best because it holds up, it's durable, it's absorbent, and it's thick enough. What we do, depending on the age of the pup and the size of the ear, we use anywhere from two-thirds to a full sheet of paper. We're going to fold this in thirds. Now I'm going to come across like this and bend it in half. Now I've discovered that rolling it towards the fold makes life a lot easier because you don't have all these frayed ends, okay? So while I put that down, I'm going to get my tape ready. And it helps to have a table handy so I can get that ready. All right, now, again, this has been folded in thirds folded in half and I'm going to take the folded ends here, the exposed ends, and I'm just going to roll them pretty tight. Alright, so that we're going to end with a seam. And you want it tight enough because this is what's going to support the ear in the bell. The bell is the base part of the ear that you stick your finger in and clean it out. Speaking of which, you can take a baby wipe and clean out those ears while they're adults, and that works great. All right, so I've got the sticky side facing the wall, the regular side, the non-sticky facing me. As you can see, it's stuck to my finger, so the sticky side is away from me. I've got this facing where it's rolled up, where it's rolling towards me. I start at an end, and what I'm doing so I'm hanging the tape, sticking the tape on the inside part of this fold so that when I roll, I'm going to continue to roll towards me. The tape is coming up and the tape is wrapping around, overlapping itself. And it's sticky side out. It's sticky side out because the sticky side has to adhere to the ear. You want that sticky side making sure the ear is going to adhere. You have your two corks, you have your two stays. When you put this up, each piece, each tape, I mean each ear needs two pieces of tape. So I'm going to put two tips up there. This is about what you need. It's about three to four inches for the tips. All right. Then you're going to need about five to six inches for the base, which is the bell. You got two ears. You need two bases. All right. Then 
the final piece is the brace in between. When you've got the ear sticking up, it has that brace part in between. So that's what you're going to have to measure. So to measure that, you look at your puppy and see how long he is from ear to ear and double that. It doesn't hurt to be generous. I think that Laney is probably about that wide, so I'm going to just go that wide. When the puppy grows up and the ears start standing on their own, you won't need that brace. And you'll begin to know that because it'll be things like just the tip needs to be done. The tips are falling. And that brings me to, before I get the puppy, to talk a little bit about this stay. When it's time to repost the puppy. First of all, the puppy's ears are growing. You've got the tape against them. The puppy's ears are growing. They're going to start buckling because the stay is going to stand like that. So if you get any kinks or buckles in the puppy's ear, this would be the puppy's ear, this would be the stay, then you know it's time to retape. If you tape weekly, once a week, that's good. If you tape more often than that, the puppy's growing. It might mean the puppy's growing too fast. It might not. It might just mean that you're doing a lousy job and the corks are coming out and you have to redo them. That's another way to know. If you've, if you've taped your puppy's ears correctly, that the cork will start coming out way down in the bell and start sticking out. And that will let you know that your puppy's ears are growing. Okay, I've got my wild child with me. And you can see that this ear right here, she's making kinky faces. It's still standing. This one's fine. She's just woken up, so she's like a little, oh, what's going on? And she's got the shiver shakes. You'll be fine. So, anyway, when you know it's time to start taping them, they start bending over like that. That's not good. Lady doesn't really need to be taped. I'm taping her for your benefit, just so you understand how to tape a puppy's ears. Okay? She sees them. We're going to go quick. We're going to go very, very quick. Try to do it with a sleepy puppy. All right? First thing we're going to do is we're going to put the stay, which is the post right here, We'll put the post on. You start with that l little knob right there. Can you see it? That natural knob in the ear. So you tape, tape side towards the puppy's ear. Stretch that ear up tall. Good girl. Cody, stop. Well, that's Sierra. Good girl. Okay. I'm taping it, stretching the ear tall along the post. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to get it deep in there as far as it can go. It's big enough so it's not going to hurt the ear canal. You just want to put it down so it's right here at the base. If you go in at an angle, that works the best because you don't want it to touch the tape. Alright, so I'm stretching up on the ear. See this? I'm stretching up on this as I'm pushing down on this. There we go. I've got all this extra ear tape up here. I'm folding that over. Alright, so she's almost done. I'm going to tape the ear tip. I'm taping the ear tip. Not the shape of the ear tip. I'm shaping it the tape of a square. See? This tape up is the shape of a square instead of diagonally because I don't want to cut off any circulation to the ear right through there with the blood flow. Each ear you're going to want to tape in towards the head so that this flap is curling in towards the head. You do not want that flap curling outward. You want it in towards the head. So very quickly I'm going to adhere this around. There we go. All right. Same thing with this one. It goes very, very quickly. There we go. Stretching up. Again, they associate this with pain when you take the ear tape off. If you do this as quickly as possible and you make it so the ear tape coming off isn't painful, you won't have a crabby puppy. All right. Good girl. They are going to shake their head naturally. Again, I'm going in around. Okay, so now both posts are up. So in order to do the final brace, I face her towards me, I cup her ears and pull them forward and in. I have the piece of tape with the tape facing her head so that I'm going to cup them with my pinkies Go right here towards the bases, hook this around, hook this around. 
All right, that's all there is to it. You've got a beautifully taped set of ears. But you always want the post, I mean the stay here, to be longer than the ear itself. Okay? So, that is how you tape puppy's ears. To take them down, first thing you do is cut the bar there. You come behind the puppy's ears. You loosen this up with your finger. They should be loose a little bit. You take a pair of small scissors. And, easy. You cut, 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 making sure not to cut the puppy's ear. Same with this. Don't cut the puppy's tip. Then you unpeel quickly. Hopefully you can use something like mayonnaise or desolve it or unisolve. Something that will is a natural ingredient that will get rid of that sticky thing so that all it does is it comes right off without any pain. Yeah, you're sleepy, aren't you? She's watching herself on TV. Again, to recap, you post the puppy's ears probably every week. You take them down. You can leave them down a day. See how they do. If they're still standing as pretty as they were when you took them out, leave them down another day. You know, if you're down for a whole week and then they begin to wobble a little bit, that's fine. Her ears are standing so well after five days that I think that we could have gone a couple more days without posting. And I think we'll probably have to post two more times and that's it. When they get feverish, because of their teething, because of vaccines, because they're tired, their ears tend to flop a little bit and break. Yes, they do need to tape immediately then. But, you know, after they're up for about two weeks, you're really on the home stretch then. You won't have to worry about it.